I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1722 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran, and Mr. Garrett Cooper, one of the founders of the Robert M. Rodriguez Fund. He's going to tell us all about the fund, what it is, how it got started, why it got started, and what it is doing today, especially for Vietnam veterans. The reason I asked Mr. Cooper to come on this podcast and tell us about this fund is because the star of the fund, Dr. Robert M. Rodriguez, who is a renowned history professor up there at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on the banks of the Monongahela River, has been contributing tremendous information on this podcast about the Vietnam War. He has gone deeply into many of these topics about the war because he's been teaching a course on the Vietnam War since 1997. He's very well versed on it, and he has been a very valuable contribution to this podcast. I felt it was only appropriate and right to let you know more about Dr. Bob and the fun that was set up for him because he has done so much for his community in the Pittsburgh area. Now he's doing a whole lot for Vietnam veterans because he has a program every spring featuring Vietnam veterans who tell the local citizens about the war. The Robert M. Rodriguez Fund does some great things. It is a nonprofit, so they do need some help. The website for the fund is robertmrodriguezfund.org. If you go to that website, there will be a way where you can contribute to the fund. Anything would be a big help to them. $5, $10, $100. Or if you'd like, you can contribute $1,000. After you hear Gary Cooper tell about this man and this fund, I think you just might be willing to make a contribution. Without any further ado, I'm going to share with you the conversation I had with Mr. Garrett Cooper, the founder of the Robert M. Rodriguez Fund. So, Garrett, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you, Mac, for inviting me to join you today to tell you about something that's near and dear to my heart. My name is Garrett Cooper, and I'm speaking with you, calling out of my home office in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I know you've been working closely on your terrific podcast, and more recently, the podcast that you've been doing with Bob Rodriguez, who's a former teacher of mine. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about my involvement with Bob. I know you've been hearing quite a bit from him about his deep learning about Vietnam and you know, really his sort of passion for U.S. history and really just kind of in general history of uh, mankind, if you will. I was fortunate enough to be a student of Bob's for two years in high school. So this was back in 1996 and took Bob for AP American history. Kind of all the stuff, you know, in terms of the starting of the country and the Federalist Papers and kind of working all the way up to the 60s. But then like so many high school curriculums at the time and This may still be the case. We kind of left off in the 60s, which was an extremely, extremely influential decade, not to mention the decades that that passed that came after that turbulent time period. And one of the big topics at the time that a lot of us students wanted to learn about, because, you know, it's an AP class and it's kind of another way of saying those were, were in in some cases, the geeks of the school. You know, I myself, sort of kind of a proud geek, but also uh, a jock as well. But I love Bob as a teacher. And so some of us were hoping that at some point in our senior year, we might be able to do something that would kind of pick up where where we left off in the 60s. And Bob, at that point, had been doing some work around Vietnam and convinced the, I don't know if it was a high school, but even if it went further up, to let him teach a leadership course where the whole second part of the class was about Vietnam. And the first part was really 
looking at different leadership models, different sort of management styles, but, but also specific leaders throughout history. Vietnam really dovetailed quite nicely with that first part of the course because we looked at public officials like Robert McNamara, obviously Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and some of the cabinet folks that were surrounding them, giving them advice, and kind of asking ourselves all along, like, what do we think about these leadership models, these leadership traits, the the messaging that these leaders at the time were giving the American people and, and also delivering to the vets? Those two courses left such an indelible mark on me that I later went to college. And at that time, I kept in contact with Bob. And I was fortunate enough where I went to school was just right outside of Washington, D.C. And I ended up interning in D.C. and came across a gentleman named David Christian. David is, I believe, still to this day, the most decorated Vietnam vet. He wrote a fantastic book about his experience. In it, I recall him mentioning that factoid. I met David through that experience as an intern in Washington, D.C. And then David was very close with Jan Scruggs. I think he chaired the group or definitely had a leading position in a group that ended up picking the wall design. And Jan himself was a, was a veteran. And so came across these really wonderful experts in Vietnam and people who lived lived that experience and then also came back stateside and did a lot of work also promoting issues around veterans' causes and in the case of Jan, like helped choose the Vietnam Memorial. And so, you know, again, keeping tabs with, with Bob, made the connection between Bob and those experts, and they eventually ended up speaking to a future generation of my high school uh, peers, which I was pretty jealous. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get to participate in that because at that time I was in school. But anyway, all I have to say is I, I had this great relationship with Bob, and he just left such a mark on me. And I know so many other people, um, even going back to his coaching baseball days when he had a number of successful teams in our high school. Over the years, it kind of just like kept kind of gnawing at me, you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, like a pebble in your shoe where I was just like, you know, someone ought to do something that really calls attention to just this humble leader in our community. We name buildings these days after wealthy benefactors or wealthy uh, philanthropists and often kind of tycoons and leaders of industry. But it also seems like we should name them too after amazing and influential teachers like Bob, and especially with what's going on now. Like, And I think the reminder about many humble folks, humble Americans who are just these essential people in our economies, I think we owe it to as much as we owe it to them, I think we almost owe it to ourselves to just recognize just how special they are and how, how much influence they've had on people in, in our communities. And so, yeah, this this thing kept just kind of rolling around like, man, this guy is an amazing teacher. I mean, he's that kind of teacher that is the Robin Williams of Dead Poets Society or, you know, these once-in-a-lifetime teachers. And I mean, I should know, I had, <laughs> I had a a lot of uh, a lot of classes through college, uh, you know, a couple couple of different postgraduate programs and so forth. And so I've taken a lot of classes, had a lot of teachers, and just like unequivocally, he was the the best teacher I ever had. And I know that I was just one of a drop in the bucket in terms of former students of his that felt that way. So basically, it was almost like kind of a, a pebble in my shoe, right? Where it just kept like, I just kept thinking to myself, like, man, we had to, you know, someone had to do something to just pay tribute to this guy who has touched so many students. And I think, I mean, Bob and I once sort of just threw out a number and I mean, it was, it was in the tens of thousands of students that he's had between high school and, and even teaching at a local college level here at the uh, school here in Pittsburgh, Duquesne university. So yeah, about 2011, uh, I approached Bob and I said, what I want to do is I've done some research. I talked with the local community foundation here in Pittsburgh and I'd like to set up a donor advised fund where we raise some money and we give away an annual award to a deserving senior. And, um, you know, and Bob, first of all, it was probably, it was one of those things that, that, that communication and the fact that, you know, I'd moved back to Pittsburgh right around that time, wanting to be closer to family and, and, you know, and also kind of find a way to get more involved in the local community here in Pittsburgh as a, as a native 
we just had this amazing conversation and, and I could tell it meant a lot to him and, and it meant a lot to me to be able to connect with him at that kind of level. And so, so basically I said, look, I did some research, community foundation in Pittsburgh, they're going to want us to raise 10 grand. And once we will raise 10 grand, it kind of sits passively there. And, we, and basically every year we can give up to 5% of it out. And we both kind of said, well, you know, 500 bucks. Sure. I mean, that, that can help us uh, a graduating senior, but you know, what if we wanted to do something else with it? In addition to giving that award out, what if we had some extra money around and we wanted to do an event or we wanted to do a community project, we didn't, we wouldn't have the ability to do that. And so that's when I said, well, you know, what I can do is I can incorporate us as 501c3 charitable organization. I think we both just kind of said, yeah, that seems like the right way to go. And sort of through this process, I'd also been reaching out to former students of Bob's and saying, hey, here's this thing I'd like to do. I ran it by Bob. He gave the green light to move forward with it. He gave his blessing to it. And what I also said to Bob is like, you know, I want this to live on, hopefully past all of us. One way of doing that, but also keeping you involved in it would be to have, you know, would be to have you choose a family member to also be on the board. And Bob has a big family. <laughs> he has a number of kids, and now he's adding uh, grandkids to the mix. So he asked his one son, Justin, who's been a, just a real, a real blessing for our board, sort of our go-to tech person. So Justin joined as well. And then since then, we've just been building out with former teachers that taught with Bob. In one case, his former principal, Dr. Mike Bonacci, who himself was a Vietnam vet, and then other students of Bob's throughout the, throughout the decade. So I was a late 90s guy, but we've had some mid-80s, late 80s, just even recently, a student who graduated a couple of years ago. So we've kind of pulled together this awesome mix of people, and we have now given out six awards. Up to this year, those awards were $1,000. The idea behind the fund, how we give it out, you can see this on our website under reply, is the whole thing's built around what Bob thinks in terms of, you know, recognizing the right person for this. And so we call it the Good Citizen Award. And really, the sort of tenants are evidence of leadership in a non-titled role. Uh, and Bob always loves to use the example of, um, you know, think about like a student substitute teacher coming into a classroom uh, and wanting to wanting to help the students that day. But, you know, maybe the lesson plan wasn't you know prepared because the, the, the teacher who called off was sick and they just they didn't realize they're going to be out the next day. And so an example of this would be like a student sort of stepping up and saying, hey, this is where we left off in the lesson plan yesterday. This is what I think the teacher was going to go over today. And like, is there a way I can help you kind of get organized or, or even maybe even uh, make sure people are paying attention as you're trying to step into this, this role. And so Bob always uses that example, but that's the idea of like, it's evidence of, a, of, a, of, a, of someone taking on a leadership role without the title. And then the other two tenets of how we give out this financial award is evidence of character. And sort of that's built around examples of giving us examples of how you were trustworthy, respectful, responsible, you know, practice fairness, caring for others in good citizenship. And then lastly, just evidence of some kind of plan post-graduate, uh, post-graduation. And, and the idea here, and I think, again, this is just, you know, Bob has such a great way of looking at things, you know, the, the sort of traditional mentality was, oh, well, you know, you, you finish high school and, and college, right? But Bob's like, no, 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 it can be college, but it could also be a technical school. It could be just going into the workplace. Uh, it could be the armed services. It could be starting a business or even sort of leaving as a, something else that is gainful and productive, right? So it's so even then, I think it's a pretty holistic way of, yeah. of looking at a senior or a young person's plan post-graduation. So we look at all those things, and we have a community of teachers that help us decide who's the deserving person, and we give out the award. You know, we've given out the award to the captain of the women's basketball team, to a young person who's helping their family, you know, in, in difficult financial hardship times, people that have fleeing war-torn countries and come to the U.S. to get an education, a uh, competitive swimmer who won a science contest and w talked about one day wanting to go work for NASA, right? So it's like a whole range of, of students who have won the award over time. And so more recently, Mac, what we've done is Starting several years ago, one of Bob's former students, Father Vince Colo, who, if you ever had time to interview Father Vince, he would tell you that Mr. Rod, as we call Bob, had a pretty 
strong hand in him taking up the priesthood when Vince was a young person in his 20s and sort of looking for a little direction. You know, Bob happened to to come across Vince and ended up introducing him to a couple of the priests at uh, Duquesne University, which is a a Catholic uh, university. So today, Vince is a priest and just has done some amazing things himself in our in our community. But so Vince, several years ago, had this idea where he was pushing us to do more in the community in terms of teaching history to adults. And so he sort of initially stepped up and said, "Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna let, uh, through the fund, I'm gonna make a donation and fund this." And so what we did is we did an event to honor the men that lost their lives in the sinking of the USS Sullivan. Because that there's some there's some ties to Pittsburgh with that ship and the brothers. A lot of people kind of loosely base it on Saving Private Ryan. So it was a family that all the brothers requested to serve together, and that ship went down in the uh, fighting in the Pacific in World War II. And there were uh, a number of brothers, and they all lost their lives. And basically, after that, there was a decision not to, even if, if siblings wanted to be with each other, not to let that happen just to prevent this kind of thing. So Vince funded that. He brought a granddaughter to Pittsburgh of the Sullivans, and she gave an address. And it was just a really beautiful event. And there were some ties to, uh, like I said, some ties to Pittsburgh. So we had grandkids, distant cousins, and so forth that came to the event and said, you know, I, I remember hearing about, you know, this family person that, that went down in the USS Sullivan, but never really understood the backstory. And so we talked about the whole story of the battle, what happened, you know, the sort of the position the ship found itself in, where we think it's at today, and sort of some of the sort of post things that have been done to celebrate the the legacy of the men that, that lost their life on that day. So we just did a really wonderful event, had probably about 120 people from the community turn out and honored at that event some family members, some some more direct family members that attended. So that kind of got to start doing community events. And then Bob, the next year, so this was this was almost three years ago, a, a little after that, but not too long, where we did one on, on to celebrate the Vietnam vets. And Bob's been working with the vets for years, really since that course he started teaching that I was sort of the first go through in 97, where he invited vets from the community. In a couple cases, the veterans were, were really recruited by some of Bob's students that wrote them letters asking them if they would come and speak to the class. And then Bob got to know those vets and then they sort of continued to stay involved every year coming back to the high school and and talking to the students. And so eventually we were able to find a home at Duquesne University to do the Vietnam Symposium. And this past year we did our third symposium on, on, it's it's usually held in the uh, springtime to allow for the students to attend, uh, undergraduate, graduate students. In the last couple of years, we've had over 100 people attend the event. It's a real unflinching look at the experiences that the men and women, we have a, a, a nurse who talks about her experience serving in Vietnam. But it's, um, it's one of those things that I was fortunate to be in Bob's kind of first class in 98, where he was teaching the topic. But, you know, as he told me, you know, as we kept in tabs over the years, that it's it's only gotten better. <laughs> it would always make you feel a little jealous. You say, "Oh, you know, Coop, it's uh, it's so much better than when you took it." And I was like, "Well, I liked it taking it when you had been, so don't make me feel too bad that I'm not getting it now." You're saying all these things are all as a result of Robert M. Rodriguez Fund. Yeah. So the website is Robert M. Rodriguez Fund. dot org. You can go there and read about the history behind it, and you can look at our application and reply. And then there's a button on there that you can click to go to. You can make a contribute on the homepage, contribution on the homepage, or go to the contribute tab. And we have some, some old blog articles. And I'd like to put in there one thing. When you gave the website, mm-hmm. it's Robert M. Rodriguez Fund dot org. He is of Portuguese heritage, so his last name is yeah. spelled with a S rather than a Z. Yes. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because on occasion we, you know, people will say, oh, you know, like Z, and I'm like, no, 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 it's an S. <laughs> so, yes, Robert M. Rodriguez Fund.org. Let me tell you just a little bit about the fund. So, like I mentioned, uh, a number of us are former students of Bob's. Mark Perlman, who's been with us really since the beginning. Mark was one of the founding board members. Mark is a 88 graduate, I recall, of Chargers Alley High School. Along with Mark, 
we have two former teachers of, of Bob um, who are on our board, and, and Kristen uh, Steen, Kelly Tobias, Bob's son, Justin Rodriguez, is on the board, Emily Keebler, my wife, who's just like this fantastic digital marketing person, is on as well. Uh, and recently, um, we, we welcomed Chris Axler, who's a former student of Bob's on the board. We're an all-volunteer board. None of us take any salary or anything out of the organization. We sound impressive in the sense of the community events that we do and the awards that we fund. But our, our annual budget's usually about, you know, somewhere between 1500 and two grand. Like so many other small nonprofits, we basically try to get as much free stuff as possible and beg our friends and our, our family members and stuff for, for favors and also self-fund quite a bit of the organization. It's been an amazing run. And so this year will be our seventh award. We're, we're, this year, we're actually cutting back a bit for the budget reasons, but also we're hoping, Matt, to give out $1,000 awards to groups of students that come up with ideas and projects to help sort of bring the community together, I almost like to use the uh, the idea of like really sort of lift the spirits of the community. That sounds like a tremendous thing that you're doing that. And all this was inspired by Robert M. Rodriguez. Absolutely. I'm going to say uh, thank you, Garrett, for telling us about the Robert M. Rodriguez Fund. And I would encourage anyone who has been listening to these presentations by Bob Rodriguez about the Vietnam War to consider contributing to the fund to help them do these wonderful things that they're doing. Garrett, I thank you so much for coming on here and telling us about it and helping us to understand more what an outstanding person Bob Rodriguez is and what he's doing for his community a long period of time. We appreciate it, and hopefully we'll get some results for you. Thank you very much, Mac, and I really appreciate what you're doing, and specifically with your work with Bob. I just think it's so important to capture and, and archive the shared knowledge you both have. But obviously, you can tell he spent decades pulling this information together. So I really appreciate you finding a home for all the knowledge that's in his head. I'm glad to do it. And it's all going to be archived right there on the podcast. So it'll be available for anybody as long as I keep paying the annual fee to my uh, website host. <laughs> It'll yep, be there. Know the feeling. But anyway, thank well, you so good. much. Okay. Thanks, Mac. There you have the story behind the Robert M. Rodriguez Fund, how and why it got started. I think you will agree it is an outstanding project put on by outstanding people for an outstanding individual. I highly encourage you to go to that website, Robert M. Rodriguez Fund.org, and make a contribution. It go to a very good purpose. Thank you for listening to this story told by Garrett Cooper, who helped set up the fund in the first place. This is Mac Payne here, closing out episode 1722 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You are cordially invited to return for the next episode where Dr. Bob is going to tell us all about the My Lai Massacre. That's something you really need to know about because we do not want things like that to happen again. The more we know about it, the more we can work to prevent reoccurrences like it. Again, thank you for listening. How about that? Ain't that a mess?